Hello, this is The Provoke Prawn, and this is a video to show off and discuss the highlights of the Samsung CRG9, a 49-inch super ultra-wide gaming monitor that sports a resolution of 5 120 by 1440 over a 32 by 9 aspect ratio. Now, this screen is essentially two 27-inch monitors glued together in a much more impressive way than just being actually glued together obviously it has no bezels so the benefit of ultra wide without having two monitors side by side it is a real beast of a machine that supports hdr 120 hertz refresh rate amd's free sync 2 and a really impressive bit of kit now this is a 49 inch monitor that i've used for two weeks after moving from the lenovo ultra wide 43 inch monitor and this is a hell of a lot better it will cost you around 900 pounds a thousand dollars roughly around that range so it is an expensive thing and i can totally say that i would pay that after spending two weeks with it gaming and working and i had to send it back and i'm really sad now because going back to my standard 34 inch 1440p monitor is quite painful for gaming it is absolutely amazing if you stick with me you'll see several clips of me playing with it on different games and see what it's like as you can see it's got a lot of flex and bend and uh, ability to turn it on the stand it gives you a lot of flexibility in the way you set it up and it features a number of really cool features and design capabilities that make it particularly interesting. For example, it has the ability to plug in both DisplayPort and HDMI at the same time from two different sources, which means you can do picture by picture display and have two 16 by 9 format displays on the same screen at the same time from different devices say a laptop and a desktop machine and i actually captured footage of this but i did try it out a little bit and that is pretty bonkers however as a standard gaming display it's also magnificent it's really hard to do it justice but you can see just how vivid the colors are and what a wonderful wraparound display it is that curve is obviously quite substantial and a lot of complaints i've heard about people that never played with ultra widescreen monitors they're worried they might be turning their head a lot to look at either end of the screen especially 49 inch actually you don't find that at all what you do find is that you have a much more wide peripheral view and you get to see a lot more of the world and it is a wonderful experience now this samsung monitor as you can see has a dock on the back for the stand that you need to screw in so it's not quite as easy as the lenovo monitor that i reviewed to set up you need to screw that stand in at the back and then set it up and you can see me doing it here. You will note there is a little ring around it. It does have some little backlighting on it as well. I'll show you that in a bit later on. But the setup process is relatively easy. Just a few screws in the back and then a screw in the bottom plate and you're away. You then plug in your power cable, your USB cables and either HDMI or DisplayPort. Obviously DisplayPort gives you the better gaming experience. So that's the one to use if you've got it. One thing I will note is the power cable that comes with this is your traditional kettle power cable, same as you use on your PC. It is, however, very short. I found that it was painfully short and I couldn't get it on the desk very easily, so I had to actually get an extension lead power brick in order to fit it on the desk, which is a real first world problem. And obviously you could buy a longer cable if you needed to. However, it does come with a lot of other things and uh, all the other cables that you'll need as well. Here you can see it set up and on the rear you'll see it just has this little bit of subtle backlighting which shines nicely on the wall. And other highlights of the stand is this little clip that you can pop out and use to hang your headphones on. Another thing that I'm not able to demonstrate from this angle is the channeling on the back which I'll show you in a second that allows you to channel the cables around and make it a bit tidier. So where that hanger is for the headphones you can also remove the back of that and run the cables around the back a bit better than i have done if you have the space to run them now it has usb pass through on it so you can plug in the usb cables to 
your PC. You'll note the proprietary sort of connection there. And then you can connect any other peripheral devices to it. You'll note, as I said, you have two DisplayPort connections and an HDMI connection as well. So you've got options for connecting different things to it. I'll leave the full specifications as well as a link to the official page in the description below if you're interested in checking that out. Another thing it has is a little hook that goes on the back that you can use to cable tidy as well. So you can cable tidy there and then through into the stand itself to keep cables nice and neat because there are a few large cables coming out of it. You can drop the screen down quite low as well to hide those away. And there's also a back plate that mounts on there. And here's some of the mess. I did tidy it up a little bit more. And the screen is finally installed. It's worth laughing at the tiny Razer 10 keyless keyboard I have and how small that looks by comparison to the gargantuan screen itself. As you can see, you have loads and loads of space. You can actually use three windows side by side at basically full width in this, which makes multitasking for work a joy. Now there's a full on menu system at the bottom that you can see here as well as three buttons that allow you to switch between various different profiles. So within the settings you can see you can change the refresh rate and it goes up to a maximum of 120 hertz. You can also change between different picture modes, set the response time, turn free sync on and off. There's a virtual aim point that creates a virtual cursor on your screen. If you want a sight or crosshair for games that don't have it and you want to cheat a little bit, I wouldn't really use that myself. But And there are other settings to dive into. Now, one of the thing, gripes that I had with the Lenovo monitor when I used that was I felt like you had to mess around a lot with the settings in order to get it looking good. But actually, the default settings on this monitor are not like that at all. They're really good. It gives a really good brilliant picture experience really clear beautiful nice colors nice richness especially when you're playing hdr games which i'll show you later on uh, and again as i said it's going to be hard to give it justice on a video like this because obviously what you're watching it on is going to be different to what you've seen on the screen but it is a fantastic bit of kit and you do get what you pay for one of the other things i like is this eye saver mode you can see down the bottom which basically takes the blue light out of it and eases the brightness so that if you're working on it as i am during the day and you're browsing the web or looking at white backgrounds and black text then it makes it a bit less harsh on the eyes and it doesn't ache quite so much and then you can just turn that off when you want to get into gaming. The picture mode in gaming has a number of different settings to account for the different games that you're going to be playing as well. And as you can see there's the picture by picture settings as well that I was talking about. So it's basically plug in your different devices and then you can set it in picture by picture mode and have those two separated on the screen and that just shows you just how much space there is. There are other settings as well that you can dive into including power saving USB supercharging and other things like that depending on what peripherals you're plugging into it. But out of the box just to Playing with it on its default settings is fantastic. And you can see what I was talking about here. These three buttons at the bottom, they have different picture modes assigned to them. So you can set it up if you like certain styles and games. It means you don't have to dive into the settings each time and tweak the specific settings that you like and customize it. You can just set a profile and use that each time. Now you do need to turn HDR on in Windows and obviously on the monitor to make the most of the HDR capabilities. And I was playing Red Dead Redemption 2 because I've been testing that out on the Lenovo monitor that I was using so I wanted to see how it compared and this monitor just is absolutely amazing with Red Dead you see a lot of the world a lot of the surrounding world around you and it's a brilliant experience there are gripes with ultra wide monitors and if you've never used them before one of the main problems I have is developers tend not to do the visuals for cutscenes in ultra wide so you end up with black bars down the side and it cuts away from the story and it kind of ruins the experience a bit but when you're in game like this you can see the amount of view you have one thing i did note i don't know if note, is that resolution the 5120 by 1440 does mean that you 
have ultra settings on if you have ultra on and everything up to maximum you might find your fps is down now i've got a pretty high-end machine uh, it's 2080 ti rtx and it's a bit of a beast and yet i was hitting around 15 to 20 frames with <laughs> red dead redemption maxed out on ultra settings and with hdr turned on and everything else so i had to crank the, the graphics down a little bit which just shows but it is you know a really wide monitor with a very high resolution and fantastic display it also does a really good job with the color differences and it just really immersive experience you can see so much of the world around you you get so much peripheral view you don't find you turning your head very much you can just dart your eyes around and with super ultra wide or ultra wide monitors you do find that you get the edge in like fps games because other people can't necessarily see as much to the side without turning their mouse constantly so you don't have to turn around as much to see a much wider view of the world and therefore you have the edge of the competition at least that's what i've always liked to think and i just enjoy that experience of glorious side to side goodness for working as i said it's also fantastic not as good obviously we've got three windows like chrome windows or Microsoft Word or whatever else you might be using then you might find you have to turn your head a little bit more to see like the far edges of the screen because you can't do the peripherals of that but it does mean as a multitasking experience you can do multiple things at once without having to minimize and maximize windows and you get so much space 49 inches uh, that resolution just gives you a hell of a lot of space to play around with to work with and to game with too so it results in a really awesome experience as I said, I think the testament to this device, and this is a judgment I use for a lot of the devices I use that I have to send back is, will I miss it and would I buy it myself? And the answer is yes, yes I would. Unfortunately, I don't have that much money floating around, especially at Christmas time. I've got to spend my money on the children and the wife wouldn't be happy if I blew nearly a thousand pounds on a gaming monitor and I probably wouldn't be able to sneak it past her. However, that is a testament to just how good this monitor is and the experience and the fun quality of it. I think I wouldn't have gone for the 49 inch monitor with a 1340 by uh, 1440p, the lower resolution one. I think you'd probably find that that experience wouldn't be as good. It wouldn't be as clear and it'd be a bit more blocky and it wouldn't be as enjoyable. However, uh, this resolution with 120 Hertz refresh rate, the HDR and a number of other settings and features to it that make it really beautiful. You can see here a bit of actual COD. You can see the wonderful range of the lights and the colors and just like how dark the screen gets in the dark places and the brightness by comparison. It's got a really high contrast ratio and just really good delivery of excellent visuals. In a minute, be able to see that close up as I go into particularly dark areas. And it's been fun to play with on every game. I've not noticed any issues with it. There were no dead pixels or anything like that. And there were no problems with tearing or anything. It was a very smooth experience, very clear, very enjoyable. I think you might struggle to push 120 frames per second on this screen to so make the most of the 120 hertz, especially with that resolution, unless you had it on the lower settings. But visually, it is stunning. Plus, you get to show your friends what a wonderful screen you have and you can see here the difference the bar itself is very dark the wall that i'm standing against is white and the flash muzzle flare is also lighting up that area so you can see just how different the contrast is and what a brilliant experience it is too tested out a number of different games with it and it ran smoothly in all of them here you can see a bit of squad and my absolutely terrible helicopter flying i only just started playing this game i'm not very good at it Hopefully you found this video useful though and like me are tempted to buy one of these screens because it is magnificent. If you have any questions please be sure to let me know in the comments what you'd like to know about it. Just be sure to check out the description for all the links and specs and thanks for watching. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful, interesting or hilarious. Be sure to subscribe and check out these other videos. 
as well as taking a look in the description for links and information you might find useful. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or anything you'd like to see extra about this and have a great life.